Genocide monster drops out, endorses fellow genocide monster. President Biden has caved to mounting pressure to drop out of the presidential race due to widespread concerns about his obvious neurological decline, bowing out and endorsing his exact ideological clone, Kamala Harris. Apparently, the consensus is that he's too demented to run for president, but is not too demented to actually be president for the next six months. And hell, whatever, man. This means nothing and changes nothing, other than perhaps arguably somewhat diminishing the likelihood of a Republican empire manager being sworn into the White House in January. Harris differs from Biden only in voice and appearance, and has been an enthusiastic supporter of Biden's genocidal atrocities in Gaza over the last nine and a half months. Harris, assuming she wins the nomination, will campaign on the promise of continuing Biden's incineration of Gaza, continuing Biden's ironclad support for Israel, continuing Biden's proxy war in Ukraine, continuing Biden's escalations against Russia and China, continuing Biden's expansion of the U.S. war machine, continuing Biden's facilitation of ecocidal capitalism, and continuing Biden's dehumanizing policies of worldwide exploitation and imperialist extraction. If she gets into the White House, the face of the operation will change, but the operation itself will not. And the same will be true if Trump gets in. Every few years, the U.S. empire has this weird little festival where it pretends the government is changing hands and will now begin operating in a way that is meaningfully different from the way it was operating before. But then the exploitation continues, the injustice continues, the ecocide continues, the wars continue, the militarism continues, the imperialism continues, the propaganda and indoctrination continues. The authoritarianism and oppression continues. The behavior of the empire is no more changed by getting a new president than a corporation is changed by getting a new secretary at the front desk of its main office. Much will be made of Kamala Harris's race and gender. Much will be made of the fact that she is not Donald Trump. Much emotion will surround her campaign. And then, whether she wins or loses, nothing much will change you won't be able to tell by looking at the machinery of the empire who took office in January. Its behavior will remain the same. Nothing real is happening on the level of electoral politics in America. The protests are real. The activism is real. The efforts to fight the imperial propaganda machine and wake people up from their indoctrination are real. The efforts to give rise to a real revolutionary zeitgeist are real. But the elections themselves are a performative ritual put on to help people feel good about themselves, like a religious sacrament performed by a priest. A genocide monster has bowed out and endorsed another genocide monster. That's the whole entire story here. That's all the commentary and attention this new development deserves.